Il peut être la baisse roquette. Walter qui rend les règles et ça le kill. Sur Z, Walter qui prend les noms. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everybody here. Worlds tonight. We're doing it from LA today because they're packing up in Paris to move everything to London for the quarterfinals. And what a two weeks it has been, gentlemen. You know, if I just want to reflect on the two weeks, expectations that came in, expectations that were and were not met, kind of the insanity that ensued during the first week of groups and then how it unfolded into week two. The only thing that held as an expectation was that SKT was in the kick some ass. That was the only thing that we knew would happen and it did. Yeah, exactly right. That is the one group I think everyone got right. Every other group is just all over the shop. Maybe today AHQ rescued some people's pickums, but everything else was just such a good mix of League of Legends with some teams playing well across the first week and then the day when that all came together, teams just were playing out of their mind. Yeah, we talked about the, the pickum statistics. 52 correct at this point, just coming out of group stages. That's not even counting how many people will or won't get it right when we move on to the bracket stages. But again, so many surprises coming into the tournament. Cloud9 starting 3-0, Origin starting 3-0, and then the likes of uh, LGD starting 0-3. I mean, that to me was what was so astonishing when you don't see teams play for four weeks at a time. And really when they come in, they're showing everything they've got in terms of innovation, in terms of uh, consistency and really watching it all unfold, I feel that we've arrived at the, the true best eight teams in terms of mixing all of those skills. Yeah, and my biggest surprise was actually a player, NL, someone that had been on the bench, they brought him in for the finals at, uh for the LMS and you know he wasn't really doing that much of a great thing then they started Kramer again and it was like well they still don't have faith in this guy and then Never Lose comes into the starting lineup and completely rocks the group stage for Flash Wolves that must be the best experience of your life coming in as a sub and then making that you know we talk about the uh, easy whom we talk about bringing flame in but the super sub of the whole thing was NL in the AD carry position what really shocked me though was all the interviews in that one month span that we had with all the really solid agents, he's like, man, TSM fanatic, these guys are gonna kick some ass. Like the North American teams, you gotta watch out. NA is coming. Like, well, CLG's well. looking good. Yeah, I was like, wait, really? <laughs> uh, I got part of this region. They're gonna do well. And then like, Phew. I feel like they were just building it all up so they could just tumble us down even harder. Yeah, absolutely. All fell apart for NA. 0-10 in week two, not picking up a single win there. That's absolutely devastating as a region. The flip side of that, though, is the LMS, who completely showed up. You already touched on, you know, Flash Wolves, but AHQ as well. The two of those teams really showing up for their region in the second week, propelling Flash Wolves to seed one, AHQ to seed two. And I have a feeling they're going to, you know, perform even better next week with a little bit more time under their belts. And I just love the story of the uh, LMS region, right? You know, the split that came through with the GPL, then finally making good tracks at Worlds last year, making even better tracks at MSI where AHQ were on a tear. Now to this stage where like they're just legitimate contenders, 100%. One of them went through in a uh, group with a Korean team as the first seed by taking them out a couple of times. Like Flash Wolves is overall Hold on, the legitimate contenders against SKT. I'm not so sure about making it out of that one who well, else is going to be like th this is my question to you skt is clearly the first team can you say that ahq and flash wolves are that far behind the rest of the teams in this race right now behind skt on that side of the bracket you have skt ahq origin and flash wolves ahq is the second best team uh, uh, we'll debate you know, this later. See, we'll debate this later. We only have so much time. It. Other things I want to hit on, though, with this tournament so far is uh, the amount of di champion diversity that we've seen. We've had 69 unique champions so far just in group stages. So we've surpassed the halfway point of total champions in League of Legends, the 69th being Twitch in that tiebreaker game. But it's just been an extraordinary amount of, uh, of champions that have come in. But I'm curious to see how that funnels, you know, because think, we're watching a new meta develop. I think we blame a lot of it on the new patch, but the 5.18 patch didn't really change a whole lot of things. I just think it has to do with League being played professionally for so long that all these teams are really understanding how the game works and how you can make everything viable as long as you know how to make it work, what composition it fits in. I mean, 
couple of weeks before the tournament, we were saying, oh, Tom Kench isn't even a good champion. When he was released, like, ah, oh, this, this is never going to work. It makes no sense. Now he's being almost permabanned. He's an amazing pick as a support. We might even see him as a jungler. There's so much more to be shown, and I'm sure that these teams have even more things prepared because all these new picks are honestly delivering wins. And the meta clash with the new picks has been what has done it for me because it's no longer a meta where, like, in the LPL, you're like, 80 carry is king. We have Uzi, we have Imp, we have Death. Like, in Korea, it's like the top laners get so much farm. Like, LMS, Maple is getting so much. And, like, every single one of these strategies is now successfully working on Summoner's Rift. You can even play carry junglers. Like, Kakao and Kasa have sh shown in very limited uh, sample sizes that carry junglers are still a legitimate way to play League of Legends. So, you can play anywhere, anytime, and as long as you bring your A game, you're going to win the game. Yeah, the teams have had so much time to play that rock, paper, scissors of champions in League of Legends, and they've come up with some really interesting things. We've seen teams like SKT play Rise and no one else yet. We'll see if Janna comes back. Tom Kench is probably going to be a big Brand big support. Pick. Brand support, right? Let's mm, not go down. maybe not, <laughs> right? But, but there's yeah, been some yeah. really cool, you know, certain teams have played one champion and no one else has touched them yet. We'll see if they make reappearances. However, on the topic of reminiscing, we asked our audience today what some of their favorite moments from group stages were. I thought it'd be fun if we do the same. So I'm going to start us off. Here's mine. I think that ADG right now are just playing phenomenally. Mm. I'm going with Invictus Gaming. Mm. I think the LGD game <laughs> was an outlier. Mm. I'm going to give LGD one last shot. Mm. Origin will continue to ride this momentum and hype train and will continue to do great things. <laughs> I would like to point out to everyone at home that I was very sick coming in to the last week. Uh, very, very sick. Who'd have guessed it? Imp, the world champion, finally returning. <laughs> And it's only <laughs> fitting that we have the prophet <laughs> sitting next to the yeah. anti prophet oh, yeah. for this. I now understand why I was invited onto the show. Yeah, that was a, it. Was a last minute edition. Like you know, we got to get spawn only for the <laughs> only for the humiliation yeah. factor of it all. All right, Crumbs, you're up. I Give it to us. Such a good laugh. Mine was of course yesterday. Group D's KT with the crazy save of Arrows Mordekaiser. I mean, this is a play I'd never even seen this thing before. Amazing. Who has the the thought process, like, I'm going to hook him out of the lantern. Nobody, I've never seen that before. The communication as well, right? Because yeah. you, as a support, can say, okay, I'm going to hook him off. But I also have to communicate to my AD carry that yeah. I'm going to do that so he can then flash, grab the lantern. And we've talked about the ingenuity around lanterns a little bit this tournament so far uh, with people throwing wards on top of them, making them exceedingly hard to click on. So watching people find new and inventive ways to work around that the is The crazy just thing is, that's actually a play that even has some counterplay. Alistar could immediately, okay, I'm gonna ultimate out of this because I know he's trying to pull me out, but he's never even seen that play before. It's just something brand new offered to the table. And for somebody that's been playing the game for five years and first time seeing something, it's very refreshing. And better than that, it was against LGD. So, you think, know, we I just hit the trifecta. <laughs> the hammer at home on Spawn. All right, Spawn, you're up. Yeah, Favorite I, moment. I'm all about unbenching the Tom Kench right now. And when you saw this play, taking an AD carry into the middle of the team fight. This is a troll move in solo queue. This is bank. what you do in solo queue to get reported Listen, and banned. They did this to North America. They're, this is basically a wild <laughs> card right now. Like, there is a really, like, it's a little painful at that point but just seeing that. I like what you pointed out because, you know, I played with Yamato. This is what I was doing with him. You can't eat people out of recall, but you can definitely take them into a Viga. But to do it in <laughs> such a great way, that just shows how good Ku is at reading plays and being able to set it up like that. Yeah, essentially seeing a solo Q troll turn into effect, an effective team technique is really crazy. And again, one of the reasons why I think Tom Kench is going to be uh, continue to work his way up the yeah. ladder in terms of priority. Uh, you know, next up, I want to look at our quarterfinals. We've done some reflection on the group stages, but we also have to look ahead at the quarterfinals and the group draw, or, or in the bracket draw that we just saw. I mean, if we start top to bottom, we've got the Koo Tigers against KT. We hit on it a little bit earlier. This was a series that we saw played out in Korea that went to five and was won in a blind pick by KT. 
Well, there isn't blind pick in these best of fives, and both of these teams are looking pretty strong coming out of the group stages. Yeah, they certainly are, and both these teams have monsters in the top lane. Like, I'm talking people that will take any top laner in the world right now, apart from maybe Myron, and completely destroy them. And Someday versus Smeb, The Rock versus The Riven. This is like, you could not set up a better storyline for this game. It's going to be so fun to watch. I have a feeling that the Korean teams are really expecting to make it out of groups, all of them, so that they probably save some things to play against each other because, you know, they scrim each other more than anybody else. So they have to save something just for that off scenario that they have to actually play in them games that matter against each other. So I think we're going to see even newer and crazier things coming out of these guys. Yeah, collectively, they were 15 and 3 in the group <laughs> stages. So again, you know, it, as much as we have a diverse, you know, uh, set of teams coming out of group stages, that scoreline there speaks to the dominance of that region still and how hard the rest of these teams are going to have to fight in order to take down one of the Korean Titans. Yeah, the one game that gave you hope, though, was watching Origin beat a Korean team around the map and being able to out-rotate one. Before that, you were like, they're mechanically superior, they play the map better, their matchups are fantastic, their pick band phase has been great. You saw that game and you're like, there is a slither of hope that someone can replicate that and do the same thing. I want to fire through the rest of the bracket stages. You know, next up we had Fnatic versus is EDG. We got to see these teams play at MSI. This is a big one. EDG, you know, it's really tough to assess their power level because they got beaten by SKT in groups and then had an, a pretty easy time beating up on the other two teams in their groups. So I'm not really sure where they're at. I'll do the power level assessment for you. This team won MSI. This team lost one best of five all year. This team is hey, freaking oh, amazing. This team almost lost to the Bangkok Titans. I don't want to hear it. With the predictions you've been throwing around, I don't know how much weight I can put on you. AHQ with 10,000 gold ahead against SKT in a best of one at MSI, my friend, still did not mean anything. <laughs> EDG is a class outfit, and anyone that thinks that that is going to be a one-sided, that game will be fantastic. We saw the yeah. prequel of it at MSI. This is going to be the finale, and it's going to be great. I agree with what Jad and Monte Cristo were saying, that this could possibly be the best quarterfinal. So I, it, all, all kidding aside, I do think both of these teams are really strong. A lot of it's going to come down to which of these teams shows up. We've seen Fnatic when Hooney's not playing well. We've seen EDG when they struggled against the Bangkok Titans and couldn't get their early game together. I want to hop down to the other side of the bracket because we only have so much time. You know, first up, we have Origin versus the Flash Wolves. We hit on it briefly as well earlier. That I feel like this is going to be a very close matchup. The Flash Wolves have been surging. Origin looked to be faltering a bit at the end of their group stage. The strength of Origin really stood out to be that best of one. Like they really prepared, but once the opponent got a read on them, it became a lot harder. Particularly so us, you know, was a little bit tilted on that on those uh, later games, and the drafts just weren't as crisp as they were, as they were before. You know, the Flash Wolves have been praised for having awesome drafts every single game. Winning games just straight off on that, on top of exceptional play, closing out some games very quickly in a very impressive fashion. So this is going to be a lot closer. Yeah, it certainly is. And Amazing is going to be tested so hard. I feel that you don't play against junglers like Casa very often. They've fallen back into that supportive role, and this guy just refuses to play that way. So I'm really interested to see how that jungle matchup goes. Carsa had some serious highlights during the tournament. Last matchup, AHQ versus SKT. I mean, this is not the team you want to be drawn against, especially after having to go to a tiebreaker just to get out of groups. So all odds are stacked against AHQ here, I think. Yeah, it's about whether AHQ can degrade the game, right? If they can get that scrappy team fight play that they love. The danger is EDG tried that and SKT whooped their butt. So I, I, there's always a hope, but how much do you give AHQ in this final? I don't know. Not, not really. <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> not, not personally. Crumbs <laughs> ever, ever the pessimist or the realist, I guess. Yeah. Well, Regardless, these groups have been insane. The games, the you know, the fans in Paris. Let's talk about that too. And I hope and believe that the bracket stages will be just as exciting. That's going to do it for us here, and we'll see the rest of you at quarters. Here we go into the game, everybody. Taking to the rift. It's going to be a lot of damage to tie. He wants it. The ult comes down, but it's not enough. Oh, flash is forward. He's going to do what it is. It's AHQ. They're on the fountain. The Nexus is exposed to tie. All the way in the back of his mouth, but still not safe. It's AHQ. Even out the matchup. Not back, but look at all of the AOE action as balls. Trying to get something done. High locks down the first one, but it's already a double kill. Fnatic looking so much better. All right, you gotta keep doing it. Hey. Yeah. There's the death sentence on Elimination, and it's all falling apart. Destiny comes down. Incarnation melting at the hands of AHQ. What a 
stunning performance from this Garena side. Breakfast goes down the tie, gets a bump Hootie! start, but Hootie, the double! The double! The, 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 the triple kill! The quadra kill for Hootie! Holo, holo, holy crap! Gets caught and apprehended backwards, fades oh. back to time. The oh. 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 Incarnation! Bazonia's by his time, and Kitty's again as the man engaging the fight. Sneaking left, man alive, he's gonna go down! Fix this gaming. Pick up a win. Holy crap! He stole it. But the fight continues. Sam Stone's out. Reckless running and running away. And Fnatic take the first seed. We're gonna find out. Who is going to be the eighth and final team in the quarterfinals? 250 HP, Ratatat, Tats, and is oh, Holy two man knockup! Tail and a slicing maelstrom, Tats, a couple members, elimination, Black Shields himself. Oh! oh now a big engage, and AHQ will be the final team out of Group B.